cassette boy. Um, we um, basically take other people's copyrighted material and uh, re-edit it without their permission. Um, as such, we live in constant fear of getting sued, hence these ridiculous and rather ineffective disguises. <laughs> um, I, that wasn't what was on the script. No, I, I know. Completely uh, I'm jamming. That bit. I'm okay, we're jamming. That's good. That's good. Um, okay, so well, today we're going to give you a very brief history of our work together and try and relate our work to automation. <laughs> Anyway, we, we're going to look at the different technologies that have influenced, helped, and sometimes hindered our work. Um, obviously, we're more used to some technologies than others. Um, most people, if they've heard of us, the first time they encountered our work would have been um, in 2009 when we released a video on YouTube called Cassette Boy vs. The Bloody Apprentice. Uh, and here's a brief clip of that video to give you an idea of the sort of thing we do. Let's get on with it, shall we? I've got a nice treat lined up for you. You might know oh, that this week quiet, is uh, London Fashion Week. I'm going there with my family. I want to be right on the catwalk, jumping and flipping backwards and forwards, packaged in the most horrible way, in tight panty girdles and a 30 quid skirt. And then I'm going to stand up and say, hello, girls, how's my pants doing? Do you think that appeals to a woman? I don't give a shit. Can I ask you a direct question? Would you like to kiss me? Yes or um, no? No. Well, no, not no. Well, yes. Yes, I, no, I won't. Well, I'm asking you the question. I, I, you know, don't take it personally. You tell me. Do you want to kissy kissy my mouth? Yes or no? The answer to that from me is yes. I like that answer. You're high. I can't get over those lips. I love the lips. So you get the idea of that. But anyway, that's, that, when we released that, that was pretty much the first time that most people will have heard of us. Uh, but we actually started working together 15 years earlier than that. So uh, um, that was a long time ago. Back in those days, we weren't even called Cassette Boy. And the sort of work we made was very, very different to the video you've just seen. So that is uh, the only photographic evidence of us uh, working back in the day. Uh, one of us always had our tops off. That was a rule that we enforced very strictly. It was summer. It was hot. <laughs> um, so we started making out compilation tapes for our friends. We used double cassette decks on normal hi-fi systems. The tapes we made were mainly techno music with little bits of talking cut in between the tracks. We'd loop words and phrases or drop in sentences that seemed ridiculous when taken out of context. This sort of thing. Belgium. 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 Yeah, as you can tell, we've improved a bit since then. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, we used our tape decks uh, very, very badly. We abused them completely, pushing them beyond what they were designed to withstand. We'd be hammering the record and pause buttons every second or so to cut together single words at a time. And basically, we, br we bust up a lot of tape deck. <laughs> there, was, there was one that ended up making a horrible grinding noise every time it recorded to the point that we had to wear headphones so we could actually hear what was going on to the tape over the sound of the tape deck's mechanism destroying itself. Um, but it had a very good action on that one, didn't yeah, it? it was a very nice tiak, action. Tiak. Yeah, it's very Made good. a good tape deck, Tiak did. Anyway, these tapes were a lot of hard work and there were no technological shortcuts that we could use. A lot of time was spent fast forwarding and rewinding to find the right bit of tape. Uh, um, as the tapes developed, the techno music disappeared almost entirely and we were left with just the vocal samples. This is a clip of one of our last tape pieces, which is a mashup of the TV chefs, The Two Fat Ladies. This is the meat. This is the meat. Lovely piece of meat. Keep the old meat going. Veal, pork, animals, chicken's liver, chicken's liver, chicken's liver, loin of pork, bacon, ham, pigs, pork loves it. The liver embraces it. Beef stew. A rabbit stew. Soups and stewed, soups and stewed. Beef stew. Beef stock. Chicken stock. Lamb stock. It's always a good idea to have a pie. Oh, dear, dear. Anyway, the full version of that is three minutes long, so... <laughs> Um, but anyway, that sort of stuff may sound random, but each one of those edits was, care was a carefully taken creative decision. <laughs> uh, I had a notebook at that time, which I, I used to list all the samples and all the time codes for each one of the samples. So it would read, you know, 0039 bacon, 0048 old bacon. Uh, God. But anyway, it, 
I think I've still got that notebook, actually. Good, or good. A lot have. of work went yeah, into that. Yeah, um, So then um, we'd exhausted what we could do with tapes, so we moved on to computers. Uh, and this is a track from our first album that um, addresses the change in our working methods. Tapes, tapes, tape recorders, tape recorder. Uh, we'd play off tape. It was all about tapes back then. Tape recordings of conversation. Secret tapes. Tapes? Put insurance on tapes. These cassette tapes were spreading all through the city. Vroom, vroom, cassette. Play. It was a manual system and it was the only one available at the time. Type cassette, type cassette. Will somebody turn the tape recorder off? You have to unplug it because the button doesn't work. Analog's obsolete. Check. We did it like that and now we do it like this. Computer, 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 computer. You need a computer to hear it. Computer. What's a computer? What's a computer? He took a computer because he's a different lad. Wow. Sound editing just gets easier and easier. That's why people are switching to digital. Get digital. Bring the machine right in, please. Just bring it right in. So, although we'd moved on to computers, we're still stuck more or less to the aesthetic of the old tapes. We did a little bit of layering sounds on top of each other and a little bit of audio manipulation, but basically it was just one sample, then another sample, exactly the same as it had been on the tapes. Yeah, we weren't doing that much we couldn't do with a tape deck. Uh, we were just doing it more precisely, which computers obviously allow you to do. They also allow you to undo stuff, which we couldn't do on tapes. Um, the other major difference was that we were now making our own music to put in between the spoken word samples. So we released three albums, and uh, the changes between those three albums mirrored the changes in illegal file sharing software over that period, uh, because that's basically where we got all our material from. Our first album still relied very heavily on spoken word samples that we'd recorded ourselves off the TV, um, because there wasn't much else out there on the internet at the time. Um, we did a cut-up of Jamie Oliver, which was made from just one episode of one of his shows. Um, that meant that years later we were able to track down that one episode and recreate the piece with added video, which uh, this is a bit of. Do Lally, keep the windows open, wicked and all that, go into the old butchers, get the old chops, put them in the old dish. Right, right, right. What I'm going to do is, um, like, I put like, kind of like a kind of like a little sort of thing in yeah, and olive oil, stuff like that. And like the stalky, stalky bits, sort of stalky, yeah, stringiness, yeah, pomegranate, yeah. No, I don't have many good friends, good friends, you know, ones you can trust. Um, um, whack those in, whop them in there, whop that in there. I'm pretty damn simple. I'm a little toss up, I'm a little bit wet. I'm not too deep. Nice. I mean, it's quite nice to have like, you make know, you know, salt and pepper, yeah, breadcrumbs, yeah, retro salad, yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, I think, wash my hands, and you just kind of want to whack this in the fridge, whack it in the fridge. I'm quite mad, styly, styly. You're going to hold that against me, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's probably, you know, that's pucker. Nice, you know, it's great. Nice, 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 really nice, just nice. You want it to taste nice. So that's nice, lovely. Lovely, lovely, and that's lovely. I'm doing a party for Bender the Aussie. It's his 30th birthday. I'm going to whack my old man right up his alley. Ooh, yeah. He'll like that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, doesn't he, doesn't he look young there? <laughs> oh, old quilt tongue. <laughs> anyway, uh, as, long, as well as uh, single episodes of The Naked Chef and whatever other TV we, we could manage to get our hands on, um, lots of the samples on our first album came from snippets of music. And this is because in, back in 2000 and 2001, when we were making the album, uh, TV wasn't shared online, uh, but music was through the... Uh, everyone probably remembers Napster and Audio Galaxy and those file-sharing sites. Uh, so we were able to create theme pieces by searching these sites for songs that had a common theme. Uh, a bit like this excerpt. Light my fire. Set the place on fire. Um, we'd actually had the idea for that piece back in the tape days, but couldn't afford to buy all the necessary albums to get the songs. <laughs> um, just nicking it off the internet made it much easier. Yeah, didn't we actually buy a Phil Collins album once just to get a short sample? Yes, we did. Yes. And then we vowed never to do that ever yeah, again. Yeah, um, 
Our second album came out in 2005, and this was still before TV was widely shared online, but there were lots of spoken word things available by that point, including lots of audiobooks and self-help tapes, so they formed a large part of our second album. Uh, this is a cut-up of a Harry Potter audiobook, and it's quite filthy. It was nearly midnight. Harry Potter was lying in bed. Harry pulled out his dick. He looked at it happily for a few seconds, noticing that it was rather thicker than usual and had grown a few inches over the last year. Fingers trembling slightly, Harry grabbed his package and pulled. As long as he didn't leave spots of spunk on the sheets, his aunt and uncle need never know. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> so our last album came out in 2008. And by that point, BitTorrent had really taken off. So most of the samples on that album came from television. Uh, and if we, if we had a good idea for a, for a section or a bit, we could just keep downloading more and more episodes until we had all the samples we needed. Such as this. Yeah. I have a dream, a dream of freedom, freedom and justice. I have a dream. Let freedom ring, let freedom ring. Hello. Okay, he uh, was admitting that he thought you were very strong, slightly defiant. I hope to go back to the South with material prosperity and the riches of freedom. He's prepared to offer you £850. £850. Martin, deal or no deal? I refuse to believe that the bank of this bankrupt. So I say to you, no deal. <laughs> um, so throughout all those years, there was no real automation to our process. Um, but going digital and using the internet did let us build on the work of others. People who digitized and uploaded audiobooks, or people who, for some reason, religiously recorded deal or no deal, converted it to AVI files, <laughs> labeled it accurately so we could tell which ones we already had, and put it online. Yeah. We're trying to relate our stuff to automation now, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Well, that it's relevant. The yeah. new stuff is relevant. Um, but anyway, soon after our last album came out, we made the move to video. Uh, the Apprentice video we showed you earlier went online in 2009 and instantly reached way, way more people than we did with our albums. Um, the immediacy of YouTube and being able to upload a video and have people watch it straight away was very satisfying. However, it did mean that the days of long, extended, hour-long albums had gone. Now everything had to be a smash hit single. Um, or an attempt at a hit single, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk now a bit about how we made the Apprentice video and about how some of that process could have been automated, possibly. Um, so there you see the timeline for the whole six-minute video. Um, some of you may notice that we edit in Sony Vegas. Uh, that's because it's a sister program of the one we used to do our uh, audio editing uh, before we moved to video. And we basically opted for Vegas because the keyboard shortcuts were the same. Um, and we've stuck with it ever since, um, despite the fact that no one in the industry uses it. <laughs> and uh, that's caused us endless problems when working on more professional projects. Um, however, we're reluctant to change because our way of working has evolved to exploit Vegas' strengths. And like a painter with a favourite brush, we're a bit superstitious about changing our tools. And we're idiots. And we're idiots. Bloody and we're minded too idiots. We're too lazy to learn Premiere yeah. or anything else. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's my uh, So, if you look at the screenshot, anyway, each tiny red line represents an edit. And there's about 200 different samples cut together. Uh, to make the six minute video, but that is only a small part of the process. The video actually contains material from 48 different episodes of The Apprentice, and we only looked at the sections with Sir Alan or Lord Sugar in them, um, but it's still, it still equates to around about 24 hours of raw materials. So the bulk of our time is spent watching that raw material, uh, looking out for samples that might be useful. There might be intrinsically funny words like panty girdles, um, any word that's delivered in a particularly forceful or funny way, or just any vocabulary that sounds like it could be part of a joke. So looking at this next screenshot, over here on the right, that's the finished six minute video, and all the rest is 45 minutes worth of samples that sounded like they might 
be useful for the finished video, but most of them obviously didn't get used. So there's about 1,300 of those. Um, it's hard to see how the gathering of useful material could be automated, mainly because we don't know what we're looking for until we find it. Um, so it would be hard to train a human to help us collect those useful samples, let alone a machine. However, maybe organising the useful bits once we've found them could be automated. When you're looking for the one time Alan Sugar says panty girdles in those 1,300 samples, it can take a long time. So if anyone knows anything about voice recognition software and would like to build us something, then that would be great. Yeah. Um, I just noticed I've got to read out your joke now. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, after collecting potential useful samples, we begin the next long and laborious process of finding the ones that will work together to make jokes. We never ever start out with a script in mind because it's most likely you won't find the necessary words for what, you're, what, what you've written. Um, so, like the Wombles, we rely upon making good use of the things we find. <sighs> <laughs> The things the that things Alan that Sugar, Alan sugar behind. leave behind. Who wrote this? <laughs> um, anyway, then comes the most boring part, like all that wasn't boring enough to start with. Uh, generally, we'll find that we've got a joke almost working, but it's missing a few simple words, like because or and. When Alan Sugar talks about flipping backwards and forwards in tight panty girdles, it's the word in that we won't already have collected. When we made this Apprentice video, we had to listen back through our 45 minutes of samples, or worse, the original unedited episodes, until we find, found a nice clear in, which is harder than you think, as it's always the little joining words that are mumbled or run together. Thankfully, that part of the process is now partly automated for us. A friend of ours built us a database which contains subti subtitles for about 2,000 episodes of TV, including all of The Apprentice. So here's a screenshot of it. So you can see that you're able to search subtit for subtitles that contain the word in uh, that only occur in episodes of The Apprentice. And then that brings up search results that show the full sentence that the word in occurs in. And we can choose the ones that look like they most might, might be most likely, so the ones that look like Alan Sugar said them. And then the database will open those quotes in Sony Vegas for us. Um, we still have to listen still through them to, to uh, select the best, um, but, so it does still take quite a lot of time, but we can find usable words much more quickly using this system. So yeah, they're slightly automated, but the scope for automation in our process is, is limited. Um, most of what we do really is about taking creative decisions, picking a subject for a video, collecting useful sounding material, and combining that material to make jokes. Um, it requires an ear for dialogue and a sense of humour, but uh, some of it is really just dull donkey work. We've managed to automate some of that, and more, hopefully, could be possible in the future. So we're going to end with a quick word about how automation can sometimes work against us. YouTube's automated content recognition uh, system is very efficient, so it looks out for um, copyrighted music or TV or whatever and flags it up as soon as a video is uploaded using something like that. Uh, and we've had some videos blocked as soon as, as soon as they finished uploading, which is very frustrating. Um, we do try to work around those limits, though, uh, and we're going to end now with another one of our more popular videos, uh, which uses an M&M instrumental. So we were worried about it getting blocked before anyone saw it. Thankfully, that didn't happen, possibly because we made sure that the music has talking or audience applause over the top of it throughout the whole video. So maybe that disguised it enough. Uh, for whatever reason, we got away with it anyway. So uh, we'll leave you with this one. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We've been recording the music video, and it goes like this. I'm hardcore, and I know the score. And I am disgusted by the poor, and my chums matter more because we are the law, and I've made sure we're ready for class war. Taking money from the man who works long hours, giving power to the tycoon in the glass tower. That is why I can look you in the eye and say this is the party of the mother fuckers. We don't care about the mother suckers because this is the party of the mother fuckers. And no, I don't think that's a dirty word. So let the beat drop. I come here with flows right from the top. Everybody knows if you work in a shop, 
We won't help you. And do you know what? People rising from the bottom to the top has got to stop. We have the bravery to bring back slavery. Working in a supermarket is just the start of it. My friends, there is no job at the end of it. You will be working for your benefits forever. Let me get this off my chest saying, yes, we are selling the NHS and we'll give you less. And that is just for starters. Even after privatizing, sticking plasters, it is a social disaster that makes our hearts beat faster. Now, I am your master. The last thing this country needs is us, the conservatives, worse than the alternative. We don't care if you're driven to despair. Don't you dare say it's not fair. I'm not saying it's not funny. It is for me. I've got loads of money. This is the party of the motherfuckers the country is run. For me and my mothers, this is the party of the motherfuckers we just don't care about the mother suckers. Thanks.